The writer in the New Testament says, do you not know you are the temple of God? And the Holy Spirit dwells within you. And that place, what does temples do? They offer sacrifices. They offer incense, which is prayer. They offer sacrifices unto the Lord. One of the things that I am thankful for is the strong revelation of worship that we received. And independently, actually, Zell and I both received this before we even met. We, we just had that uh, ticking in our hearts uh, uh, to do with worship and praise. And one of the, the powerful truths, I was trying to explain to my boys last night that, you know, churches didn't always have drum kits. You know, when drum kits came into churches in the 50s, like it was an anathema, they only knew the organ. But before there was an organ, there was a Gregorian chant, and every, you see, everything, everything has been different right the whole way back, even, even in the David's Tabernacle. But what, one of the things that I have been thankful for is that worship has been the default of our hearts. And one of the powerful truths that came out of uh, renewal, they talk about the renewal of the 70s and the renewal of the 80s. <clears throat> and this is going to be the heaviest place I go this morning. So if I go here heavy, I'm going to come out the other end, okay? And it's okay if you don't get it this morning. You will get it in the future. But one of the things that, that came out was the priesthood of all believers. You may never have heard that phrase before, but this is really important to do with your life. The priesthood and all believers. And I was thrilled when I was looking at our church constitution. We're just doing some work in the constitution. And as far back as 1993, we have a conviction in our tenets of faith that says that we believe in the priesthood of all believers. I thought that was wonderful. And to the leadership team that, that did that, then I congratulate you for doing that. That every believer is a priest before the Lord. Think about that. You think about all over Belfast this morning. There's a lot of people going to priests this morning. Not realizing if they're saved, they are priests unto the Lord. That, that the priest... Hood or, or, or to be able to minister as a priest before the Lord is not part of one tribe, like the tribe of Aaron, then the tribe of Levi. Levi only will, will, be, will minister before the Lord. Or a qualified clergy. Or a meal dynasty. See how many people I've excluded if it's there? This is not what God does. God doesn't exclude people. But every believer is a minister. I am not the ministry. I've said this before in the church. We are the ministry. Every believer is a ministry of priest before the Lord. First Peter calls you a royal priesthood. Do you hear what I'm saying? First Peter calls you, in other words, you're a kingly priest. You may not know that, but you're a royal priesthood. Why is that important? It's important in the atmosphere of what we're doing this morning in the church gathering. That you and I, Jesus, the light has went out. Amen. The light has went out. Fold away. It's gone. Amen. Don't know what's happening. Batteries, brothers. Amen. It's important because you and I become the ministry. Like when we come in on a Sunday morning, we become the offering. We become the sacrifice. We become the praise unto the Lord. We minister. You, you minister. Before the Lord. That we have a mantle on us every time we gather to offer up. Every time you gather to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto, unto the living God. Church is not a place to observe. But a place of encounter. And, and when you have everything in churches rotating around the platform or the band, you have an audience. But when you have Jesus and presence, you have a body that comes alive. And this is what is wrong with our worship today. Worship is not limited by person. Well, I'm shy, Pastor Samuel, so I don't worship. The Bible doesn't give any license for shyness it, it, when it comes to worship. He, he just says, let all the people of God praise his name. Every believer is a, you are a minister unto the Lord. Every time we gather, we are to bring forth ministry. Ministry is to flow out of the assembly. Ministry is to flow out of every seat in every place. Every person is to minister before the Lord. We are to offer up spiritual sacrifices. The church is to overflow with worship. 
The gatherings are to be dominated by a release of praise and thanksgiving and worship. Amen. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. When first Peter calls us a royal priesthood, God is doing something with us. God is, God is lifting us into a position with him. Like you, you are being honored by the Lord into a position that was, that was only in the Old Testament for the Levitical priesthood. But you are being lifted into this place to minister to the Lord. Because that's what a priest does. A priest ministers to the Lord. And then, you're, then out of that ministry, you minister to the church. And then out of that ministry, you minister to, to the lost. The first priority of worshiping and ministering before the Lord sets the stage for ministry to the world. Yeah. Listen to what I'm going to say. Evangelism in its purest form is an overflow of worship. Yeah. 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 You don't evangelize and then worship. You worship then evangelize. Yeah. Because it has to flow from there to there. In Isaiah 6, when Isaiah encounters presence and he encounters the glory of God and he sees God in all his tenderness and his majesty and all of his goodness, then the Lord said, who will we send? And Isaiah says, send me. Because he was flowing out of what he saw. Because in worship encounter, we are transformed. We carry what we see in presence. The heart of the Father. You see, if it's always there, that's why Jesus said, love Lord, Lord your God first, then love your neighbor. See, if it's always you being the evangelist and you trying, you will burn out. You, you, you will not have the tenderness of God. You will not have the love of God. You will flow. You have to be here to touch them there. Because evangelism in its purest form comes out of worship and you see the heart of the Father, the tenderness and goodness, and then you carry from the presence who he is. To neighbors, people, taste and see. That the Lord is good. We have missed something powerful in our communing, our lingering, our worshiping, our ministering to people who transform cities and communities. In Ezekiel 47, it says that the river flowed out of the temple and everything that touched the river came alive. This worship in the temple heals what's in the streets. It comes from the temple. It comes from the altar. It's healed within the streets. Every time the river flows, you know what Ezekiel said? It healed and it brought life. We are looking for the best strategies to win the lost, but the best strategies in the Bible is to worship before the throne. 